Joining me right now is the former Secretary of State. He is a Fox News contributor, Mike Pompeo. Secretary, it's great to see you. And you did such a good job pushing off the CCP bad behavior. What's your reaction to Apple and all these other companies that are enabling communist China and, in fact, indirectly funding its expansion? Well, good morning, Maria. Uh, first, it, it's incredibly hypocritical, right? Georgia passes a voter integrity law. Every big tech company just comes down on them. And the Chinese Communist Party imprisons a million people in internment camps, and Apple grows their business there, right? So uh, that's bad. Uh, but it's even worse because this impacts Americans right here at home. Uh, if these tech companies won't fix it, if they're going to continue to uh, underwrite uh, allow to expand the Chinese Communist Party by financing that Communist Party, then we're going to have to take uh, it into our own hands. We're going to have to prevent them from doing this. I think the political risk to companies like Apple is real. I think a lot of companies are seeing it and they're trying to move out of China. I hope that's the case. But if these companies won't do it off their own, if they can't see that what they are doing is denying human uh, dignity to the people of China and putting Americans at risk as well, then we're going to have to pass laws that prevent them from doing precisely what they're doing today, playing footsie with the Chinese Communist Party, empowering, emboldening them, and creating wealth for them. But will we? I mean, you know, do we have tough enough leaders in Washington to actually pass those laws that you're referring to? I mean, let's face it. What are we, three years from when the Communist Party learned of COVID, uh, you know, escaping from a lab in Wuhan, and we still have not had a serious investigation into what went down in Wuhan and whether or not this was the Chinese Communist Party developing a bioweapon? Yeah, Maria. Uh, I, I don't know if we have leaders that are bold enough. There's no evidence of that. I, I, I was heartened to hear uh, soon-to-be Speaker McCarthy this morning uh, talk about the fact he's going to impanel a bipartisan group to begin to work on this project. But we're 40 years late getting after the Chinese Communist Party. There is an enormous amount of work to do. Uh, but elections matter. We now have the majority in the House. Uh, you were talking to Herschel Walker. I hope we get uh, 50 votes in the Senate. We can make a difference, and we can push back against the Chinese Communist Party that built its, built its regime on the back of the American people, that is spying at levels inside the United States that is unconscionable, and we can't turn the other cheek. We have to begin to confront it. Uh, this week, President Biden said, well, goodness, they're just kind of a competitor. No, they are an adversary determined to make us live more like them. And we have to make sure, just like President Reagan did, we have to make sure we win and they lose. I, I mean, you know, you look at a situation like TikTok. How many times can the FBI tell us that TikTok is a threat, <laughs> that the CCP uses TikTok to surveil American citizens and they could use information from our young people to blackmail them later on? Should TikTok be banned in the U.S.? And what is it going to take to actually move on these threats? Easy. Yes, TikTok should be banned. Not only are surveilling our kids, that's horrible, right? That they have uh, what you, they know what your child's face looks like. They know who their friends are. They know, they know who they're uh, going out to see on a Friday night when they're just going out to be with friends and they're in college. Uh, but it's also a propaganda tool here inside the United States to watch President Biden talk about Twitter as if it's a risk and refuse to talk about TikTok, the Chinese Communist Party that is demonstrably a risk, his own FBI has said so, uh, is incomprehensible to me. We should ban it. Uh, we should ban all the Chinese apps, all the Chinese technologies here inside the United States. We should build them here at home and we should keep America safe by doing so. I, you know, I've talked about this, Maria. The Chinese Communist Party today is here. It's in America. It's inside the gates. We have to confront it, and we have to protect the American people from the threat it presents. Well, I mean, I recognize that the direction should come from the top, uh, Joe Biden, but he's compromised. We all know that now. So maybe corporations need to understand this issue better. Do they not understand the threat that is communist China? Is it only money that's important to these guys? Maria, I think it's a mixed bag. I think some of them are naive, some of them are ignorant, just don't know. But I think that excuse is now largely gone. I think in the Trump administration, we pulled back the curtain, we ripped the Band-Aid off. You, can, you, you no longer can say you didn't know what the Chinese Communist Party was doing. And so it now is the case that you have companies that are making a buck there and aren't prepared to do what is the right thing. Uh, you're right. I, I suspect the Biden administration won't do enough, but I, I hope governors will do it. I saw Christy Nome in her state ban TikTok on government phones. There are lots of things governors, local leaders can do as well to push back. This should be a full on effort to confront China at every level of the United States government. And I hope the private sector will come to see 
the true business risk associated with playing footsie with the Chinese Communist Party. Secretary, I want to ask you about another threat within our country, something you referred to recently. You said that the head of the American Federation of Teachers, President Randy Weingarten, is the most dangerous person in America. Tell me about that. Obviously, they were in charge during COVID. The teachers union directed the Biden administration in terms of keeping uh, kids at home and keeping schools closed. They didn't want to go back to work. We've seen the data for what the teachers unions did to these kids. They kept them out of school for two years. It was wholly unnecessary to do that. There was no science, Maria, attached to it. And these kids, these kids aren't going to catch up. It is an absolute travesty. It's a tragedy. The, the, the kids in the hardest places in America will lose two years of their education. They're, they're not likely to make that up. And Randy Weingarten and her fellow travelers, this is the teachers unions that for 40 years have undermined our institutions of public education. We need to give power back to parents. We need to make sure that the Randy Weingartens of the school aren't driving their leftist vision for our schools, where we, we don't teach basic civics about the fact that there's three branches of government and there's two houses of, in, the, in the Congress, right? It's the things that every American citizen needs to know and that, that this is an exceptional nation. Randy Weingarten doesn't want our kids to learn that. It is devastatingly dangerous for America. That risk is real and clear and present, and the United States needs to push back against the Randy Weingartens of the world. So disturbing. All of this is so disturbing. We need real leadership in Washington. Secretary, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Thank you, Maria. Right. Wonderful to be with you this morning, man. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.